Hello to everyone and welcome to this online session of Geo Americas 2020 about uh, canals. I'm Bertrand Breul, Civil Engineering Manager at Axter Colletange in France. And I'm going to present you today the use of uh, bituminous geomembrane, also called uh, BGM, for waterproofing large canals. In the first part of this presentation, I'm going to explain the BGM structure and also their key features uh, for the canal project. In the second part, I'm going to present some uh, case stories on irrigation canals, also navigable canals, and to finish with, with hydropower canals. So let's begin with the BGM structure. A BGM is a multi-component product with mainly a polyester geotextile for the mechanical resistance and especially the high puncture resistance and a bituminous binder which is a mix of bitumen and elastomers providing the waterproofing properties and ensuring its longevity by impregnating totally the geotextile. But the manufacturing is done under strict quality control procedures certified under an ISO 9002 quality assurance scheme and under a French and a European certification. So the product is CE market and also ASQUAL certified. The factory operates with an ISO 14001 environmental certification. Presently, two products are available in the market. The first one is a double reinforced product, like we have on the slide, with a non-woven geotextile from 200 to 400 grams per square meter and a glass fleece of 50 grams per square meter. Most recent developments of PGMs is using a single reinforcement to obtain thinner products with similar or higher mechanical performances. Lifespan is expected to be similar to double reinforcement product. Bituminous geomembrane have several key features for waterproofing canal that I'm going to present now. As previously explained, BGMs have an internal reinforcement made with a long fiber non-woven polyester geotextile which is giving the mechanical properties and especially a very good puncture resistance to aggregates. It allows the installation of the product directly on soils without cushion layers such as geotextile or sand bedding that are usually used for polymeric membrane. We can use bedding material as big as 75 millimeter minus material when it's properly compacted. Contrary to polymeric geomembrane, the density of BGM is above one. So it means that the liner has not the tendency to float. It's an advantage when you have to do repairs under the water or if you need to install it without emptying the canal. BGM have a very low manning coefficient of 0.012 which is much better than uh, for earthen canal. And it's uh, similar to any uh, concrete line canal, but the concrete has the tendency to crack and very rapidly after two to three years, the manning coefficient is, uh, is higher. The upper face of uh, BGMs, which is sanded, offers a very high friction angle compared to any other type of liner. Its value is around 34 degrees. It gives an additional safety for human, but also animals that could be trapped in canals. And if they want to go out of the canal, they have this additional grip given with uh, bituminous geomembranes. After the review of these advantages of BGMs for large canal, I'm going to present some case stories, beginning with irrigation canals. Let's begin with the first case history, the Canal de Provence, which is in the south of France. It has been built in 1964. 
It feeds now 116 cities with water for a total of almost 3 million inhabitants. It also feeds 80,000 hectares of farming lands and around 8,000 industries. This is a typical cross-section of the Canal de Provence. Depth is 2.4 meter to 3.6 meter. Soil is usually limestone on the left and compacted fill on the right. The lining system is made with a 15 cm thick non-reinforced concrete slab in blue and a drainage layer underneath. In order to prevent any seepage degrading the structure of their canals, the owner decided to initiate a renovation program. Here you have a view of the canal before and after the renovation. The canal seems to have a concrete in pretty good shape, but a closer look will show important cracks and open expansion joints. On the right, the Reline Canal has a concrete slab at its bottom to allow easy curing operation, whereas slopes remain exposed. Panels of liner are installed transversely and welded to the concrete to create compartments for easy leak location. In order to keep a constant flow in the canal to continue feeding the industries, they created a bypass with a capacity of 2.3 cubic meter per second. They used sandbags and PVC liner to create temporary dams and obtain a 200 meter long section totally dry for the installation of the liner. There are some details of the construction here. So at the downstream part of the section, you have a batten bar with anchor balls to keep the liner in place. On the upstream, due to the flow, uh, the client wanted to have an upstream anchor with a concrete notch on top of it. And finally, the details around the bridges. The second case history is the Nagpur Canal in India. It is in the center of India. The cross section here showed a bottom width of 13 meters, a top width of 27 meters, and a depth of 4.8 meters. As you can see on the left photo, the canal was lined with concrete, concrete slabs are mostly destroyed because of the swelling clay behind them that are expanding and contracting regularly. So that's why the owner wanted to line it uh, with a flexible membrane. They choose the uh, colletanche mainly due to its ability to stay flat on the support and to keep a good uh, mining coefficient and, a, and therefore a good flow of the water. The concrete lining was partially removed when it was uh, in a too bad shape and the rest of it was kept in place and cleaned so that the liner is installed directly on either the subgrade, a compacted subgrade, or this old concrete lining. The PGM was installed transversely with only full panels going from one side to the other. Also, the length of the canal covered with the liner was one kilometer. Yeah, you can see some uh, details of the installation. On the top left photos, you have a gate with a concrete structure around it. And uh, the other photos are about a bridge and a post on the bridge. Second examples are about navigable canals. The first example is the Artex Canal in France. The owner, which is the French Waterways, is improving regularly their canal using a bituminous geomembrane. The structure of the waterproofing system consists of a geotextile, then the liner 
on top of it, then another geotextile, then a layer of riprap. The riprap is here to protect the liner from being punctured by boats or ships that are in the canal. The Lancaster Canal in United Kingdom has been renovated also with a bituminous geomembrane. The principle is almost similar to the French canal see previously with a geotextile on top of it a geomembrane uh, that has a thickness of four millimeters and on top of it again uh, riprap to protect the liner. This last part of the presentation will be dedicated to canals for hydropower generation. The first hydropower canal is the St. Dionysian Canal in Austria, where the owner, a company called Stiwag, wanted to increase their capacity to produce electricity. Therefore, they wanted to increase the flow of uh, their uh, canal. And they uh, changed a little bit the cross-section uh, that you can see on the left, that they wanted to help make sure people uh, and animals were able to go out so they created a small berm on the top part of the canal and also uh, to fight hydraulic intumescence they uh, created intermediate transversal anchorage on the canal so they dig a little bit the uh, old concrete structure to anchor the liner also, in order to be able to clean the canal, they pour asphalt concrete on top of the liner at the bottom of the canal. For this project, a BGM was used to waterproof the 5 km long adduction canal for the Compeo hydropower plant. It is designed to transport 7 cubic meters per second of water to be used for power generation, but also irrigation after water has gone through the turbines. The initial design called for a 15 cm thick short crit with a 20 cm thick gravel layer underneath to handle groundwater, and it was replaced by a combination of a 3.5 mm thick geomembrane and a 5 mm drainage geocomposite. The new design resulted in significant cost savings around 40% in the lining cost. So in conclusion, and as shown in my presentation, bituminous geomembranes have been used successfully for more than 35 years in different types of canals and also different countries around the world. BGM has a mechanical properties that allows to remain exposed without any risk to population and animals. Also, its density above one can be helpful to make repairs or even install panels underwater. Also, the installation is straightforward. So all of this make a product of choice for large canal projects. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to answer your questions.